Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the new F405 wing board from Matic, the V2. The original F405 wing has been out for about five years and it was an absolute revolution when it first came out. It was the first flight control board specifically designed for fixed wing with a, with a power distribution board, three or four BECs for fully powered servos, lots of spare UARTs to connect peripherals into, made setting up a flight control board controlled plane, FPV plane, much, much easier. I still use a stack of these boards. I have one in my iNav controlled rover there. Recently used one for an RG pilot build, my first RG pilot build on the LTE Rambler. And I have it on my biggest build, the Mini Talon with uh, panning FPV, HD FPV, uh, long range batteries and uh, the whole works. So it is a rock solid, reliable and uh, just a really well designed board. So after five years, time for an upgrade. The original F405 wing was uh, the first of the boards uh, and the, I have to say the, the pin layout was a little bit unique. They seem to have the power and uh, ground pins in different positions to most other boards or subsequently most other boards. Uh, so part of the upgrade is to bring the pin layout more into line with all the future boards that came out after the original. And that's a good thing because with the original board, I have to make up all these unique cables so that I don't get them mixed up and uh, swap them over to other builds and have reverse polarities and things like that. So having a, sort of a standardised pin layout across the whole range is going to be fantastic. So what do we get in the packet? We get the... F405 wing unit itself, the lovely coloured PWM pins, four grommets, six little screws and this uh, I2C connection cable which is designed to go into this port on the side, the uh, I2C2, for connecting the digital airspeed sensor which uh, does have to plug into I I2C2. Now looking at the old and the new side by side, let's have a look at what has changed. The size is slightly different, it's two millimetres shorter, all the other dimensions are the same. Hole spacings are still 30.5 millimetres. USB connection has changed from micro to USB-C, which is very good, coming into the modern world. And all the PWM connections have been moved into this little section here whereas before they were down uh, bottom left there or two of them were up here the ESC was up here and the uh, S3 to S8 were down here S9 is somewhere else and S10 is uh, the LED but on the V2 we have them all lined up here S1 to S9 you can see the power pins are labeled differently we've got four VX and four VX2 I'll talk about them a little bit later on in the old board the UARTs were kind of spread all over the board. We had a few up here, a couple down here as well. Uh, on the new board, they're all grouped in this sort of bottom right corner here. On the old board, we had this strange pin layout for the camera and video transmitter. We've got camera signal, ground, 9 volts and ground, and video is the same. On the new board, we have camera, 9 volts, ground, and video transmitter, 9 volts and ground. Also have LED, buzzer, analog RSSI over here, SBUS here, which is the RX2 pin with an inverter. That's the only uh, inverted UART we can have. Here's a closer view of the UART section. And you can see these UARTs here, 2, 4 and 5, have 4.5 volts power. That means it's coming from the USB. So that's great. You can plug in your receiver and GPS and uh, configure them powered just from the computer. Now having a closer look at the PWM section, C, S1 to S4 all have VX pins powered to 5 volts, 6 volts or 7.2 volts, whatever you choose. And the VX2 pins, they're actually unpowered at this stage. They're all connected. You can power them from an external BEC, that's the uh, idea really. For higher current demand builds, uh, you can have an extra BEC for these servos here. Or you can make a little solder bridge underneath there and they'll all be powered by the onboard servo BEC. There we can see the dimensions 54 by 36 by 13 high. Now if we have a look at the layout page you can see these are the solder pads for changing the servo BEC from 5 volts to 6 volts to 7.2 volts. They are found over in this part of the board here. 
We can also increase the camera and video transmitter voltage up to 12 volts using these solder pads here. Here's the little solder bridge for joining VX2 to the VX pins that's here underneath the uh, where the pins go. Now although we have VX powered pins here on S1 and S2 they're reminding us not to connect the red wire from the ESC here. That would be two competing uh, voltage sources there. Uh, so these are for other uses, not for the ESC and uh, not where you connect the ESC BSC in. It can be set up for plane or for multi-rotor. Plane gives two motors and what's that? Seven servos plus the LED. For multi-rotor you can have six D-shot motors and two non-D-shot and one servo. You can see the IMU has changed. That's the gyros and accelerometer. ICM 42688P. Uh, from the MPU 6000. That may just be because of availability. I think the MPU 6000 went out of production or just became unavailable. Uh, I don't think there'll be major changes to performance, especially not on our fixed wing. The Barrow is the DPS 310 changed from the BMP 280. I think the DPS 310 is meant to be more accurate. Current sensor has increased to 100 amp continuous uh, to 20 amp peak. And firmware targets are the same, just that we have to use the newer versions, the newer releases, iNav 6.0 and RG Pilot 4.4 or newer. And quickly the VEC outputs, the servo output, and just quickly the uh, onboard BECs, there's a 5 volt output, uh, 2 amps for the board itself and other peripherals. Camera and video transmitter, 9 volt or 12 volt continuous current 2 amps and here's a little note here for stable 9 volt or 12 volt, volt output the input voltage should be output voltage plus 1 volt so uh, maybe minimum of 3s for 12 volts out and the VX the servo BEC 5 6 or 7.2 volts continuous 5 amps 6 amps peak and again the input voltage should be 1 volt more than the output voltage for stable output and there's a 3.3 volt output for peripherals that need 3.3 volts so that's an excellent set of upgrades to this classic flight control board the F405 wing from Maytec now the version 2 different layout, different USB, a few different chips all well thought out and uh, very welcome upgrades so now I'm going to solder it up find a plane to put it on and take it out for a fly. Uh, what we need to do is check out the video filtering, see if that is still as good as the original board. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time.